YouTubers. I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Gear. And um, you should definitely subscribe. Um, the channel is A L I E N G T R, Alien Guitar. Right? A L I E N G T R. And the reason is I often refer to videos I had done in the past. And that's an easy way to find them. And I guess it tells you uh, when I do release a new video or whatever. Alright, now. Not all guitars will remember the heyday of hair metal. Yes! So you had bands like Rat and Dokken and and a white snake and so on, right? On and on and on and on. And I think um, in the 80s, you know, um, Eddie Van Halen and influenced, you know, a bunch of guitarists as well, all seeking the brown sound. Okay. And um, the 80s guitar metal sound right it was highly sought after and uh, even to this day new processors and things you know they have all kinds of overdrives and distortions and things right but for some reason they just don't have the same sound as was found you know in the 80s and 90s you know, um, older processors. And have I run across the holy grail of hair metal tones, guitar tones? All right, now, in the past, I did a video on a rack mount, right? Um, multi effects processor. Okay, um, and it was the DOD G10, I believe, right, and it was a rack mount processor from that era, you know, and of course you had all these different kinds of distortions and things, and then, uh, you know, a chorus sound, that kind of thing, but really it focused on distortion sounds. And so, I was digging through some stuff, and I ran across this. Here it is. The DoD FX7. Right? I mean, this is kind of an old processor, right? And it says, Guitar FX Processor and Preamp. DoD FX7. Right? And... Very much like the DoD G10, right? It, it's very similar in a lot of ways. Okay, um, it has um, a lot of distortion type tones, right? And I was quite surprised that, um, you know, while it has other effects as well, besides the, the preamp, which are the guitar tones. You know, now you gotta remember, this is kind of pre-modeling days, okay? Uh, but, you know, it has things like uh, um, small delays and choruses and things. But I also noticed that it really focuses on those um, highly sought-after kind of um, 80s, kind of, mm, you know, high-gain metal guitar sounds, right? Um... And, you know, some of those tones are still very sought after. And, in fact, I was quite taken aback that these are still going, uh, you know, usually when you have an old processor, guitar processor, they, you know, because the technology has gotten better and so on, that the prices on the used ones are, you know, not very good. But this one has held its own, even to this day. I mean, these are running definitely... Um, you know, I've seen them at as high as $150, 
you know, here. Okay, I'd say an average price probably a hundred or somewhere in there. Okay, now here's what's pretty cool about this, right? This is um, back in the day when they had a rack mount processor, guitar processor, effects units, and usually on a rack mount unit, usually, not all, but a lot of them, had a little screen, you know, and you had, basically, because it, they usually had MIDI, some of them at least, so you had 128 presets, where you could make your own sound and store it, you know, and have 128 of those. Well, this is very similar. While it doesn't have MIDI, um, what it does have is banks, and they're banks of three here, the first three pedals, right, right here. And you can stomp on and get, call up a preset, and you can store those. And uh, there's like, uh, I think, nine of them or something. So there, there's quite a few presets and you can store your own sounds you can make your own sounds now what's interesting with this one is it's kind of limited because the way you make preset sounds you can choose right intensities of the effect right here then they are kind of pre-made for you so you choose the intensity and so on um and as a bonus Guess what? It's stereo. Wow. Let's take a listen to it. Alright. So quite frankly, the presets are kind of poor. Okay? Now that doesn't mean the unit is poor. It just means the whoever put the presets in, you know, I think it was just to show the range of sounds you could get. And I'll give you a good example of this. Um, on the first preset here, I've edited it a little bit. You know, and look, it has a noise gate, but they didn't use it. So when you turn it on, you get this. Listen to that. But if you turn the noise gate on, listen. On the very first noise gate setting, it disappears. And you still get it. Let's see if we can turn the noise gate up a little bit. Um. Yeah. So, you know, you can get good sounds out of it, um, but you just have to edit them yourselves and come up with your own sounds, which is great. Really. <laughs> So it gets quiet, you know. Um, 
So definitely worthwhile experimenting with it and coming up with your own presets. And then it actually becomes a very usable unit, really. You know, for this kind of sound, you know, this kind of high gain sounds, you know. Um, I don't know, when, you know, when I was younger, I really liked that stuff, but these days, you know, I don't, I don't even use high gain these days. Anyway, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind, you know, because a lot of the presets are kind of super noisy and things to the point of being unusable, yet there's a noise gate that you can use, you know, to quiet it down. Hmm. And the noise gate has three settings. A slow setting, a medium, and a high, basically. And for this particular one, uh, we use that first, the slow setting, you know, where it cuts off the noise uh, very slowly, you know. And then the second setting is kind of a medium. And it works fine. And you get the same kind of sound, really. Pretty close without the noise and that makes it very usable you know for playing a uh, live recording whatever you know all right now here I am on preset number one of the DOD FX7 and I have it hooked up in stereo and as you can hear it's kind of noisy right you can hear the effect and this is, uh, I guess, the very first preset. It's kind of this distortion uh, with a phaser, right? second pedal I'm on the first bank here all right now here's the second sound right, a lot quieter of course right here and this is kind of their clean sound <laughs> is there but it's kind of minimal really <laughs> on the clean sound it is a pretty quiet unit it's, I mean it's very usable all right let's move on of course a huge kind of a I think this is a cor chorusy kind of distortion turn that down a little bit
privacy distortion sound. Uh, wow! I'm sorry, that's sad. <laughs> that's so noisy, hardly usable. No wonder. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that noise, turn it down.
listen to that noise though. Wow. Uh, that was typical of, you know, that kind of hair metal and they had the, the infamous guitar solo, you know. Okay. Here's a... Wow, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Sad.
go to the next bank. See, that one's real quiet. Kind of a chorusy sound. Ha! <laughs> it's 
Got a lot of game, but noise gated. You know. Lots of treble. Set and put on a noise gate because it was really noisy. You know, uh, in fact, I can show you that. I don't know if you can hear that, but you hear the noise there, and then with the noise gate turned on, it's pretty much silent. And then I just took down the amount of gain, you know, to give it more of a kind of a. Presets basically aren't very good, uh, but you can um, basically edit them and then store the new preset, you know, like I'll store this one right now, and um, basically come up with some pretty decent sounds, actually. Here are my overall thoughts on the unit. Um, even though the presets didn't really show it, <laughs> you know, because uh, it can get very noisy. And yet it also has a, a noise gate, you know, and um, the fact that you can make your own sounds, right, and, and, um, you could definitely come up with some really usable sounds that would sound pretty good. Now, I will say... Like a lot of processors of that era, it really is designed for, well, distortion. You know, I found that the, the clean sound is very plain, you know, uh, with very little effects there. And that could be the way it's programmed, but I don't know, I tried, you know, there's just not a lot of delay there. 
even at its highest settings, you know, especially compared to delays of today, you know, with huge milliseconds and so on. This doesn't have all that much, you know. Um, now, if you were diligent and took your time with it, I think you could get some really good sounds, actually. You know, um, now some of them, you know, obviously on these presets, some of them were extreme, you know, with um, a lot of uh, noise and hiss and so on. You know, uh, but you could definitely come up with, you know, some decent uh, rhythm and lead sounds, you know. Um, oh, man. I used to play a lot of that stuff, and back in the day, you know, I man, I would love something like this. Are you kidding me? With the massive amounts of gain and so on, you know. Um, obviously, some of them need a noise gate because they can get very noisy. You know, not unusual with high gain stuff. You know, with lots of distortion and so on. Um, but yeah, I think it could definitely be usable. And I have to admit, it's also very handy because you've got the pedal board right there. So it's kind of an all-in-one, you know, you know, you can throw it in your gig bag or whatever, right? Um, some of the sounds were pretty impressive, I thought. Some of them were kind of, kind of lousy, but I think it just showed the range of sounds that you can get, oh, an overall impression, you know. Um... And, you know, back in the day, in the, the hair metal days especially, and I, you know, and I'm not knocking anybody who likes hair metal. I mean, I used to like that kind of stuff too, you know, I mean. Um, but you could get some really good sounds out of this, I think. Um, you know, but I, you definitely have to program in, you know, the tone that you wanted that would work for you. You know, because I found these presets, you know, there were a couple that were okay, but most of them were, you know, I think just showing the range of the unit. Anyway, um, you know, you can pick these up fairly cheap, I mean, probably a hundred bucks or something like that. You know, um, and definitely a lot of fun, I gotta admit. You know, a lot of fun, um, provides a lot of sustain and that kind of thing. You know, um, and, you know, if you kept the, the hiss and noise under control, which can be done, you know, from the programming of it, and, and there are some cool sounds that I'd never heard in the, in the existing presets anyway in this unit, um, that you could make that were actually pretty decent, you know, but again, I found that on the clean sounds, you know, it was, well, the effects were kind of lacking, in a way, but very usable for high gain tones. Anyway, something I ran across, I wanted to show it to you. Um, so if you're into kind of 80s guitar sounds, you know, um, could be a unit you could look at that would be really inexpensive, you know, to use, and it doesn't sound too bad, you know. It gets a little noisy sometimes, which is strange because it, it has a noise gate. I just think that some of those presets just didn't use it. All right. Anyway, there you go. The DoD FX7, the, the hair metal machine. <laughs> All right, very good. See you next time. Okay.